Welcome, I'm Aditi Singh and you're tuned in to My India. From its first unicorn in 2011 to the remarkable milestone of over 100 unicorns today, the evolution of India's startup ecosystem has been truly remarkable. A recent report indicates that the emergence of new unicorns could propel India's economy by $1 trillion by 2030, pushing it to a $7 trillion valuation and creating 50 million jobs. Well, let's take a look at this report. The startup landscape in India has undergone a dynamic evolution since the inception of the Startup India initiative in 2016. In 2021, India witnessed a surge in unicorns, with 43 startups achieving valuations exceeding $1 billion. A recent report by the Confederation of Indian Industry CII, titled Unicorn 2.0, Adding the Next Trillion, envisions the potential of India's startup ecosystem to contribute $1 trillion to the country's estimated $7 trillion economy by financial year 2030, consequently generating over 50 million jobs. According to the report's findings, India's 100-plus unicorns and approximately 100,000 startups have made a substantial contribution of 10 to 15 percent to GDP growth between 2016 and 2023. So I think we are an evolving ecosystem. If you look at it, three years back, the number of startups which were there in the public market was almost negligible. Now we have six plus startups which are gone public and more and more startups going public this year. So we are starting to see India becoming a bigger and bigger force in manufacturing in the coming years and playing their part in global supply chain. I would say uh, the right question to ask would be that would India become like the number one or the number two economy in the world by 2047? I believe yes, that will be happening. Bamboo India, founded by Ashwini Shinde and Yogesh Shinde in Pune City, is a notable startup. Established on August 15, 2016, this venture has transformed the perception of bamboo from being seen as poor man's timber to wise man's timber. Bamboo India specializes in creating innovative bamboo products, serving as eco-friendly alternatives to plastic products, thereby contributing significantly to environmental conservation. Even though we are the world's second largest bamboo growing nation, and uh, we are only exporting 4% to the global market. So I thought, uh, why not the things we should take up? Because uh, this is something uh, directly related to the farmers, uh, you can uh, have lots of angles towards it like Plastic Free India or Swachh Bharat Mission or Atmanirbhar Bharat or Skillful India. So all those missions can fulfill with this uh, uh, bamboo. So that's why I started uh, uh, this venture in bamboo. In today's climate, startup culture is attracting many young entrepreneurs. Boards of Indian companies are also increasingly including younger members. As per data from the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, more than a third of people who received a direct identification number, or DIN, in the last fiscal year were aged 30 years or younger. A DIN is an eight-digit unique identification number, which is allotted to an individual who is the director of a company. In the 2022 to 2023 fiscal year, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs issued 420,000 DINs, of which 123,000 were younger than 30 years, while another 182,000 were between the ages of 31 to 45 years. There has been increased funding opportunities, especially from private equity and venture capital firms, which are incentivizing youth to choose an entrepreneurial path. Startups are revolutionizing India's economy in sectors like manufacturing, IT and digital services, agricultural ecosystems, healthcare services, travel and tourism, modern retail, and e-commerce. These sectors are not only driving current growth, but are forecasted to catalyze further expansion, employment, and could increase exports by 20 to 23 times by the financial year 2030. Robots, automated devices designed to perform tasks, 
while the robots of old are recognized for their lack of capacity for human emotions and other skills. However, with technological improvements, modern day robots are increasingly able to exhibit human like thought processes. Now, the demand for these versatile machines is on the rise, and particularly in India, where robotic startups are proliferating. The government is in the process of formulating policies to strengthen the sector, showcasing the nation's dedication to advancing robotic technology. Well, we have this report. Take a look. I am Vyomitra, the prototype of the half humanoid being made for the first unmanned Gaganyan mission. Viomitra, the humanoid robot developed by the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, will be launched into space ahead of the Gaganyaan mission. Its mission is to study human adaptability in space environments, contributing significantly to the success of the upcoming manned mission. This initiative underscores the pivotal role of robots in advancing technology. From hospitals to factories, robots are revolutionizing various sectors, streamlining tasks and enhancing efficiency. This growing demand for robotics is a global trend. India is actively fostering innovation in robotics, evident in the emergence of numerous startups and factories dedicated to robotics manufacturing. Notably in Noida, near the capital New Delhi, the nation's largest robot factory produces robots for diverse commercial applications. Supported by the government's Make in India campaign, aimed at promoting self-reliance in robotics. The Indian government has a Make in India initiative. The first benefit is that we have a fit like, you know, डिसाइड किए कि हम लोग का अपना खुद का मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट होगा तो कंप्लीट प्रोसेस मतलब लैंड फाइंड आउट करने से पूरा फैक्ट्री बिल्ड करने तक चाहे वो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट हो चाहे सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हो हम लोगों को काफ़ी सपोर्ट मिला है बिकॉज ऑफ मेक इन इंडिया इनिशिएटिव उसके अलावा मीन्स अभी काफ़ी सारा जो टेक्नोलॉजी जिसमें हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं पहले मतलब इंडिया एज अ कंट्री एक्सेप्ट एक्सेप्टेबल एक्सेप, नहीं था इन सब टेक्नोलॉजीज के अंदर ना लोग सोचते थे कि कोई भी रोबोटिक्स से रिलेटेड टेक्नोलॉजी होगा तो या तो यूरोप से आएगा या जापान से आएगा बट इस इनिशिएटिव के कारण लाइक यू नो हम लोग अपना खुद का मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट डाल पाए बेस्ट क्वालिटी का प्रोडक्ट बना पाए Now to promote domestic robot production the government is enhancing the research and development ecosystem and efforts are underway to raise awareness about their necessity exemplified by the inauguration of the robotics gallery at the science city in western gujarat state and this gallery presents a wealth of information on robots both current and future in an exceptional manner This is the Robotics Gallery located within the Gujarat Council of Science City, featuring numerous robots that demonstrate the advanced capabilities of this technology and how seamlessly they can perform tasks traditionally done by humans. A wealth of fascinating information about robots is showcased here, attracting a significant number of school children and members of the general public who visit daily. बहुत सारे अमेजिंग रोबोट है यहाँ पे पहली बार ऐसी अच्छी आर्ट गैलरी रोबोटिक गैलरी बनाई गई है छोटी सी छोटी आपकी रोजाना जिंदगी की जरूरत के साथ साथ बहुत ज्यादा जो क्रिटिकल क्षेत्र है जैसे कि आर्मी है जैसे कि डिफेंस है जैसे कि मेडिकल है सारे क्षेत्र में आज रोबोटिक जो है वो एक बहुत आगे का सब्जेक्ट है Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited the Robotics Gallery and experienced firsthand the capabilities of these machines when he was served tea by a robot. The government has drafted the National Strategy for Robotics to bolster robot production with the goal of positioning India as a global leader in robotics by 2030. 
This strategy, aligned with the Make in India campaign, aims to cultivate an ecosystem that fosters innovation and research within the country. India has witnessed significant advancements in innovation and technology in recent years, and the government is now committed to fostering robot production as well. This initiative presents new opportunities for aspiring entrepreneurs and startups, propelling India towards becoming a prominent hub for robotics. In India, Sufism has not only thrived but has also served as a means of bringing together diverse religious communities. And even today, the wisdom of Sufi saints continues to influence people's lives, guiding many. And today, we will visit the shrine of Saint Hazrat Maulana Ziauddin Sahib in Jaipur, city of Rajasthan, where people from various faiths gather to seek the saints' blessings. This darga is esteemed as one of the nation's most revered sites. Take a look. For centuries, Sufism has flourished worldwide through the hearts of believers from diverse faiths embodying the essence of unity amidst diversity. The Dargah of Sufi Saint Hazrat Maulana Jayuddin Shahi Vilayat in the heart of Jaipur city stands as a testament to communal harmony which has flourished for five centuries to preach love and harmony in the society. People in thousands of numbers come to the revered shrine of Maulana Ziyayuddin every day from across different corners of the state to pay their sincere tribute to the saint and to seek his blessings. The Islamic structure that is considered to be the beacon of harmony dates back to 18th century. Here, all of the people have been given love and love. किसी के साथ कोई भेदभाव या किसी किस्म की कोई चीज ऐसी नहीं होती है जिससे किसी को तकलीफ पहुंचे और जितने भी लोग यहां पे आते हैं सब मन्नतें मुरादें मानते हैं और अल्लाह ताला हजरत मौलाना जियाउद्दीन साहब के सत्कार में पूरी करता है और आप देख रहे हैं ये दरगाहें ऐसा प्लेटफॉर्म है जहां पे तमाम मजहब के लोग आते हैं The centuries-old Dargah draws thousands of devotees every day, whether they be Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs or Christians, to come together to offer prayers and seek blessings from the revered saint. It is believed Baba bestows his blessings upon everyone who comes to the Dargah with sincere hearts and that nobody returns empty-handed. Moreover, the Darga becomes a happy destination for music enthusiasts and devotees as they organize Kavali program every Thursday for devotees. यहाँ हम आते हैं तो बड़ा सुकून मिलता है और कोई भेदभाव हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख ईसाई सब हैं यहाँ भाई भाई ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है और यहाँ जब हम आते हैं तो इंशाल्लाह हमें इस दरगाह पे आते हैं तो हमें काफी हमारे जो परेशानियाँ हैं उसकी समस्या हल होती है Sufi architecture has long been used as a representation of social harmony, fostering a strong bond between various communities and encouraging a sense of fraternity in the community. Now let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. Off the shore of Phuket, Thai scientists waved goodbye from boats at sea as nearly a dozen leatherback baby turtles were released into the vast blue Indian Ocean, each equipped with a tiny satellite tag on its back. Their release marked a milestone for Thailand, making it one of only five countries in the world that has successfully reared newly hatched leatherback turtles in captivity for over a year. Sea turtles play a vital role in balancing an ecosystem as they consume large numbers of jellyfish which help to keep populations of these marine organisms in check. A leatherback sea turtle typically requires 15 to 25 years to reach maturity. Mature females often return to their natal beach to nest while adult male turtles spend much of their lives at sea.
At the stroke of midnight on May 16, 12 courageous participants scrambled up a 14-meter high tower covered in 9,000 plastic buns, marking the climax of the bun festival on the outlying islands of Cheung Chau in Hong Kong. Nine male and three female climbers wait to fill their bags with buns, aiming to accumulate the most points within a three-minute time limit to claim the coveted titles. The individuals who successfully retrieved the bun from the top of the tower would bring luck to their family. Tens of thousands of Hong Kong residents and tourists gathered on the tiny islands of Ching Chau to savour the lucky buns, lining up outside local cake shops and witness a vibrant floating colours parade. The parade showcased children, dressed as gods and goddesses, carried on still frames throughout the island, accompanied by traditional music and a line dancing, drawing warm responses from spectators along the streets. Pottery art stands as an ancient cornerstone of human creativity, weaving tales of skill and tradition through the nimble hands of artisans. And from the dawn of civilization, clay has been sculpted into vessels and artifacts, preserving cultures and legacies. So let's explore how the art of pottery in India continues to thrive even in the modern age, with artisans bustling to meet orders. Nestled within the tapestry of the northern Indian state of Uttar Pradesh lies Kurja, a city adorned with the title, the Ceramic City. Kurja has been renowned for its pottery since medieval times, flourishing under various rulers, including the Mughals and British colonial authorities. Over centuries, Kurja pottery has evolved, adapting to changing tastes and influences while retaining its distinctive character. Meet Guljeet Singh Minhas, the steward of Minhas Pottery in Kurja. For decades, pottery has been their family's legacy, dating back to the 1960s. Now, as the third generation embraces the craft, Guljeet Singh remains steadfast, committed to preserving this cherished tradition woven into India's cultural fabric. Minhas Pottery is uh, now famous for uh, blue pottery and uh, other hand-painted uh, uh, pottery that uh, we do and uh, we sell all of these products not only in India but also worldwide. In India we do it with some of the better brands like Fab India, Swadesh, Wishing Chair and other such brands which are more design oriented. Uh, the normal stuff that uh, Kurja makes, we do not make those kind of uh, stuff. We make only stuffs that are more art oriented. Pottery production is a vital source of livelihood for many families in Kurja. It provides employment opportunities for skilled artisans, laborers and craftsmen, contributing to the local economy. The sale of Kurja pottery, both domestically and internationally, generates income for artisans and sustains their craft. Moreover, skilled artisans like Mohammed Arish carry on the legacy of their ancestors, breathing life into the ancient art of pottery, making it a utility rather than just a showpiece item. First of all, this piece is molded. ये मोल्ड होने के बाद में इस पे फिनिश की जाती है फिनिश होने के बाद में थोड़ी स्पिक लाइट हो जाती है क्लियरिंग हो जाता है पीस उसके बाद में ये हमारे हाथ में वहां पर जो पेंटर है हमारे वो इस पे आउटलाइन करते हैं उनका सिर्फ इतना ही काम होता है कि वो आउटलाइन करते हैं हम कलर भर के इसको दे देंगे उसके बाद में इसमें और भी काम किया जाएगा वहां पर इसमें डॉट की जाएंगी और भी इसके अंदर डेकोरेशन जो होती है वो की जाएगी उसके बाद ये जाएगा ग्लेस पर ग्लेस करने के बाद में फिर इसको भेजा जाएगा फायरिंग पे फिर उसके बाद ये कंप्लीट हो के आ जाएगा हमारे हाथ में now, not only in Kurja, but the art of pottery is preserved by artists in different parts of India as well. In Rajasthan, artists have maintained the tradition of blue pottery, which is renowned for its vibrant blue hues and intricate designs. 
Originating in Persia and introduced to India during the Mughal era, blue pottery found a home in Rajasthan, particularly in Jaipur. For centuries, artists in Jaipur have preserved the art of blue pottery, a traditional craft dating back to the Mughal era. Made from quartz rather than clay, blue pottery possesses a unique translucent quality, crafted entirely by hand using traditional techniques passed down through generations. Items range from vases, plates and bowls, to jewelry and decorative items. We met Leela Bordia, the founder of Mirja International, which has been working to preserve and promote blue pottery in collaboration with local artisans for over four decades. Today, there तो वो हमारे लिए बहुत जरूरी हो गया है कि हम ब्लू पॉटरी बना रहे हैं पर वुड के साथ हमने इसको मैच किया आयरन के साथ मैच किया तो आप ये सोचिए वुड वाले भी आयरन वाले भी इवन गोल्ड एंड सिल्वर के साथ और डायमंड के साथ भी इसको जोड़ने लगे तो हर तबके के लोग आज इस क्राफ्ट के साथ जुड़े हुए हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि क्राफ्ट में अगर यूटिलिटी आइटम हम बनाते हैं और अपनी पहचान बनाने के लिए काम करते रहते हैं तो मेरे को नहीं लगता कि हमको पीछे मुड़ के देखने की जरूरत है With a history spanning millennia, Indian pottery showcases diverse techniques, styles and regional variations. From the intricate designs of Kurja pottery to the vibrant colors of Madhubani pottery, each tradition tells a story of craftsmanship and creativity passed down through generations. Efforts are underway to preserve and promote this ancient art form, ensuring that its legacy endures for future generations. Let's delve into Sikhism in India, exploring its origins and one of its most cherished traditions, the langa or community kitchen. Now, langa isn't just about providing food. It is a symbol of breaking down barriers and fostering a sense of community and inclusivity. We will also take you to the Bangla Sahib Gurdwara, which is a prominent Sikh place of worship in New Delhi and which stands as a beacon of Sikh faith and service. Sikhism is one of the world's youngest major religions, yet it is rich in history and tradition. It emerged in the Punjab region of South Asia in the 15th century, founded by Guru Nanak Dev Ji, a visionary spiritual leader. His teachings emphasize the importance of devotion to one God, equality among all humans, and selfless service to others. Guru Nanak's message resonated deeply with people from all walks of life, and he laid the foundation for Sikhism's core principles, which are enshrined in the Guru Granth Sahib, the holy scripture of the Sikhs. Over time, Guru Nanak was succeeded by a lineage of nine gurus, each contributing to the development and expansion of Sikhism. One of the most distinctive aspects of the Sikh religion is the tradition of Langar. Established by Guru Nanak, the Langar is a free community kitchen where all are welcome, regardless of their background or social status. It symbolizes the principle of equality and serves as a reminder of the importance of sharing with those in need. Today, the Langar continues to be an integral part of Sikh worship with gurdwaras around the world offering free meals to anyone who walks through their doors. In the sprawling kitchen of Bangla Sahib Gurdwara in New Delhi, volunteers work tirelessly, chopping vegetables, stirring huge cauldrons of lentils, and kneading dough. It's a symphony of action and devotion, fueled by the belief in equality and community. Langar is not just about feeding the hungry, it's about breaking barriers of caste, creed and class.
Here, everyone is welcome, and everyone eats together. एक बहुत बड़ा सिद्धांत है कि गुरु के घर में बिना किसी की कलास बिना किसी की कास्ट पुछ दे जान दे पंगत में बिठा के एक समान ये लंगर वरताया जाता है और लंगर ना तो कणक की रोटी को कहते हैं ना लंगर किसी दाल सब्जी कहते हैं सिख धर्म के वह पदार्थ वो रसोई वो किचन जी पवित्रता तैयार की जाए बाणी पढ़ते हैं तो एक समान वरताई जाए उस लंगर कह The tradition serves as a ritualistic expression of the equality of all humans. The longer tradition continues to nourish not just the body but also the soul. For in the spirit of longer, all are truly one. It's an amazing tradition and uh, I believe this should be shared all over the place. It's a really good uh, good initiative and um, bringing the community together that much it's really a nice nice thing. Yeah, and the food is delicious. I think it's a great tradition that they don't uh, that they accept everyone um to eat with and um especially like people who may not be able to eat any other way. I think it's great. The longer never stops and on average the community kitchen of Bangla Sahib typically feeds roughly 40,000 people a day for free on religious holidays and weekends. This number goes up to 100,000. This incredible feat is made possible through donations and volunteers. Sikh community gives 10% of their earnings which we call the swand which is the basic of the Sikh religion as well which is the message of our gurus as well to give the the swand to the needy places or the needy people. The spirit of longer also extends beyond the walls of the gurdwara. Sikhs have a long history of stepping up during times of crisis. From natural disasters to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Sikh community around the world has been at the forefront of relief efforts, offering food, shelter, and assistance to those affected. Us time is tarah da si ki dunya de utte har cheez band ho gayi si. Te je ek band nahi hoya te aadmi nu bhookh lagni nahi band hoyi. Jede vich ahi ek din de vich ek time साढ़े तीन लाख आदमियों का लंगर तैयार करके भेजते होंगे से तो अरदस करते हैं चलो सानू सेवा कर वाहगुरु ने मौका देता असी सेवा की है पर यहोजा दौर मुड़ के दोबारा दुनिया से ना आए यह जी भयानक बीमारी दोबारा ना आए तो कि मुड़ के यहोजा कुछ हो गया Volunteers often take to the streets, distributing food packets to the homeless and needy, embodying the Sikh principle of Sarbat Dabala, the welfare of all. The spirit of giving is an important message that comes from three golden rules set by Guru Nanak that are Nam Japo, Kirat Karo, and Wan Chako, meaning meditate on God's name, earn an honest living, and lastly, share what you possess, including food, wealth, and wisdom. The Sikh tradition of langar embodies equality, community, and service, nourishing both body and soul with compassion and inclusivity. Well, with that, it's a wrap on today's episode. But we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.